Good afternoon guys and welcome back to the channel. Chris Dennis here, putting specialist in short game performance coach. So you'll see we're indoors, it's been a while since we've been in here but it is raining today, first time in eight weeks and I've uh, took shelter already. So today what I want to talk through and we're going to go and I'm going to start to do a few of these is talk through some different putters, how it can affect your stroke and what might suit you, what might not suit you and why to have a fitting. So a lot of times I see people have fittings and it's more because they just want a new putter, not because they need one. So if you're thinking about having a putter fitting and you're not putting well, I would strongly recommend having a putter lesson before that. So go and see your local pro, go and see a pro, again, or online lessons, or however you want to do it, but have a look at your technique because how many times I get people come for a new putter, I take them out to the putting green, and it's a little bit of technique or it's a little bit of green reading. Again, we want, a lot of people will want a new putter, there's nothing wrong with that, and if you want one, by all means go and get fitted. I do enjoy doing putter fittings, but I want people to go away with a putter that they need, as opposed to just something that they want. So, I'm gonna go through today a little bit of a fitting for myself. So I obviously have the vintage, probably 20 years old, Odyssey White Hot Rossi. So, it wasn't fitted for me, I was given this in Dubai when I worked out there. It's a little bit long so it's 36 inch but I'm going to compare that today to the modern day Stroke Lab Rossi. So this has a Stroke Lab technology so again the weight is now put into the butt of the club and in the head so it's supposed to help with our tempo get that club swinging and let it swing naturally. So, I've never used a stroke lab, so I want to give that a test and see how that compares to my Rossi. Because I see a lot of people just try and upgrade the putter, so they might have had a vintage new port, for example a Scotty Cameron, and they might just get the new one because they say, oh theirs is a bit worn, and they say they've lost it. It's probably not the putter. So I'm going to compare these two now, I'm going to hit three putts with each, start to look at how maybe this improves my tempo, so with the shaft does it improve the tempo, does it give me more control, or am I still more consistent with this putter. So, let's have a look. So I'm going to come in here first with my Rossi, so the original. I'm going to take my time. Just like if I'm on the course, I'm going to line that ball up so again I can get my face square, and have a true reflection on how those two putters compare, the same as if I was on the golf course. So in I come first, we've got around about a 12 foot putt here. So again, pretty good roll. Second one, so yeah, very good tempo on that one from the first one. I'd be very happy with that. It's a good pop. Again, very good tempo, consistent, face slightly open, and my path's working a little bit out to the right. So very consistent, they've all finished, bang next to each other. So uh, let's have a quick look at the numbers. Let's... So again, looking at those numbers, we can see a common pattern. So my face is slightly open, path works slightly out to the right, which is a tendency of mine. But the tempo there is very good. That's out of the best you can get on there is 0.99. So my acceleration throughout the stroke is very consistent. So that's why my pace control is pretty good. The roll is good. And I do hold quite a lot of pulse. I mean, I have to when I hit the ball into the tree off the tee, so. Let's now load up the other Rossi, and let's talk a little bit about this acceleration, which is one of the biggest things I see in the difference between amateurs and pros. They can control that acceleration, control the speed, control the face angle, and hold more pulse. So let's have a look. Perfect, so we're in here now, we'll hit three pulls again. So obviously with this Rossi, we have, like I said already, we've got the Stroke Lab design shaft. So again, that puts the weight in the butt of the club and in the head, just to encourage more of that natural swing. So the weight's not throughout where people start to drag, potentially. Let's see how it works for me. So I'm gonna line these up as well. So we've also got the micro hinge grooves on the face. 
So I'm going to see how that maybe reacts different to the white hot face and the original white hot face I have in mind. So is it going to have a little bit of a harder feel? Is it going to encourage more topspin? Let's see what the numbers say. So in we come, same again. This is a little bit shorter, this putter, but it's still good. So tempo, pretty good. So interesting now, I felt like I hit a good point, it was a good stroke, the roll wasn't good, so we'll have a look at that one shortly. Okay. So very interesting on that last put there, the path was much straighter, I didn't change anything at settle, but it's the swing of the putter maybe has allowed me to get that a little bit straighter. The face was still open, but not as much. Tempo was good, 0.90, now very consistent. But what I want to look at is the putt I hit before. So on this putt, I didn't feel like I did anything different. Obviously there is some things in there. My stroke might have been a little bit longer. The acceleration was down, still good bit down so that could have left me a little bit of a longer putt for my second putt but the big thing is here I felt like I put a good stroke on but the face was open by 5.6 degrees when we hit the three putts with my original Rossi I had a lot more control over the putter face so this is interesting something that might happen with this putter because of the different weighting so that's something that's interesting so obviously my acceleration is a little bit down and I have less control on the face so this might be because I'm so used to having a steel shaft in there, what happens is it starts to drag a little bit, I start to get some kind of lag, which I see from a lot of amateurs, which then leaves that putter face slightly open. So I would say I'm a good putter, but changing to this shaft might take me a while to get used to. So without seeing those numbers, I might have just come into a fist and said, oh perfect, I'll have one of those, it's pretty much the same, but it's a newer version. Getting the numbers can really tell a story, because if I'm on a course now and I get something like that, I'm going to miss more putts. So your eight footers, that's not going to go anywhere near the hole. Those are the putts we want to hold. The longer putts, again, if I've got a left to right from 30 feet, that might finish way right of the hole, which might be on the fringe. If there's water on the right drastically, that could encourage that. So this putt is a little bit shorter, so that could also have an effect. So I would need the correct length putter, so for me it's around about 35, 35 and a half. The hosel's exactly the same, but the different shaft now is having an effect on how I can get that acceleration consistent and how that then is making the club face react when it comes into impact. So a little bit open. So an interesting test, so I want to go through this series now with looking at all these different putters, different necks and what would suit me. So hopefully it's going to give you a bit of an idea into what you should expect from a fitting. And when you do have a fitting, acceleration is one of the big things. If, if you're not consistent with acceleration, that should be something that's taken into account of how heavy your putter is, what kind of head style you have. But also goes back to my original point, it could be technique. So you could be getting fit for a putter, which then if you change your technique, is also not going to match up. So you might spend 350 pounds on a putter, you then have a lesson, you change something, and then that putter's not suited to maybe your stroke and your settle. So it all depends on how we move the body throughout the stroke. So as we come, as we go through the series, we're going to start to look at how different face balances, so if you've got more toe hang, less toe hang, how that affects the closing rate, whether that suits certain strokes. Obviously the myth is if you have a lot of arc, you should have a toe hang putter and a blade putter. Not necessarily the case. If you look at, I have a putter that's face balanced and I also have a big arc. So I can get a face balance putter to work for that. That's where I've seen my best results. So with the Rossi, I've seen my best results putting for a long time. But we're going to compare some putters. We're going to see what difference the neck makes. Again, the length, how that affects it. And then we're also going to compare some. So obviously this is probably one of the most controversial putters, the Odyssey 10, which obviously everyone recognises because it's very similar to the Spy. Did they copy it? 
obviously it was a very popular putter that worked very well for a lot of big players on tour. So Odyssey have now got their version. So we'll, we'll try those against each other. How do they compare? Which face, the grooves on the face, is that affecting that? And we're going to look at different inserts as well. So we're going to be going through all different things with the putter. So anything you want to see, comment below. Any putters you want to review, at the moment I've got the full range of Odyssey, pretty much. I've got a lot of ping putters, tailor-made, and we're awaiting Scotty Cameron's. So when we've got those in, we'll be comparing them. Toe hand putters, face balance putters, counter balance putters, different lofts, how that can affect. So comment below, what do you want to see from putting? We're also going to get a mid handicapper on, do a bit of a fitting and a bit of a test to him. So we're really going to go through a fitting and show how feel and real can be different. So he might feel that one suited for him, but does that compare to the numbers? And how does it react on the green? So again, hopefully you've enjoyed that. I'm going to go through and I'm going to try and test a load of different putters out to see which, you, if any, can beat the Rossi. But hopefully you've enjoyed that and see how necessarily a new one doesn't always mean that it's going to be better for you. So thanks for watching guys. We'll be back on Friday when we'll we're talking short game. So as for now, I will see you then.